Sup band, good day gamers, a formal bust here with Nail of St. Godharkar. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce it. Um, a first impression of this game at the very least. Uh, now, first we have our sponsor, H2O, drink it up or die. Gotta stay hydrated gamers. Nail of St. Godharkar was released in December of 2021. Um, developed um, by Bertel, Berktel, and uh, published by Proje Project uh, Traveler. Described on Steam as, in this game, you can watch as seven protagonists come to a crossroad, facing their own destiny. You will witness their own choices and the blood-splattering consequences that have they have on one another. There is no way out except to plunge them into the abyss. Tagged on Steam as Adventure, RPG, Visual Novel, Strategy, and Indie. Free to play game. Uh, very free to play. Um, indie dev, uh, there's a Discord if you want to support them that way. Or if you just want to play the game, you can play the game. Okay, we got new game, preference, help, news, quit. Now, Preference, help, and news, they all kind of lead to the same spot. Yep. Uh, there's a WeChat thing, too, not just on Discord. System. Skip mode. Not sure what this is, but we're going to leave it as it's defaulted. Auto forward. No, we're going to leave that off. Game mode. Easy, normal, hard. And I believe this comes in Mandarin, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it comes in the original language over there, and also in English. Um... Yeah, don't need to worry about that. Speed, we're going to leave the same. Don't know what it does. Display. Okay, you got text box opacity. This just windowed or full screen. There doesn't seem... It seems to auto-sense your actual um, uh, display size. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, this stuff, going to leave it all on auto. And help. Yep, got some shortcuts. I guess once you get in the game. Oh, yeah. Yep. Support them with whatever. Um, yep version 2.052 because this is continuing to be updated so I don't want to yeah, get anything else so yeah that's all that um, we're just going to go back to the main menu and start a new game not a lot in preferences you know um, I would have liked to have seen some you know audio levels um, but I don't know if there's any voice acting so that might not this might be all the audio there is but let's get into it yep yep change at any time okay I do love this hyper stylized cursor by the way Trying to sing, he moved his lips. Not out of fear of death. The instinct to cry for help. Nor our eternal need of breath. Okay. Kind of rhyming. Oh, God. <laughs> but only the bubbling of foam on his, bl on his blood emerged. Okay. But only the bubbling of foam on his blood emerged. All right. Yeah, the... Other sounds came from elsewhere. His legs trembled uncontrollably. The sound of boots splashing in something. The anxious cries. Darkness melted into his eyes so that he could only imagine the police officer's expressions from the sound of their footsteps. Though he could feel some sort of cloth being compressed on his wound, He'd rather be offered a larger and thicker blanket to cover his damp and freezing body. This was the third tourniquet. The first and second were soaked in his blood. They dried and stuck directly on his neck. He was unable to remember the details of the murderer. Due to blood loss, exhaustion, and vertigo made him feel that his body was much heavier than it was supposed to be. It was as if... He was sinking deeper into water, dragged further into the abyss. Not long after, a man approached him, attempting to see if he was conscious. The man patted the side of his face repeatedly, and it took him some time to figure out what the man was saying. Every sound had become unclear except for the murmur of death calling for him. Hang on, stay calm. The man's southern other, hang on, stay calm. The man's southern accent and clumsy antinomian blew in his ears. Uh, like a gust of wind, he relied on his hearing, which he had 
lived on, which he had lived on more than his failing sight. He could understand music even before he could talk. About his voice, the Thalysiac paper once lauded him as the best singer in Papaleoi. He was only 16 at that time. Everyone in Thalysiac took a leaflet from his father's orchestra before they arrived in Promland. He took people's praise for or granted since the day he had begun to sing. He believed that the world would be captivated by him forever. Born with a clear voice and a talented mind, he believed that he deserved all the love in the world. Okay, a lot of backstory here about some. <laughs> Lithel Theater should be the fi finale of their tour. No one foresaw that it would be the end of their future. They had been in a rehearsal when death paid a visit. He remembered the appearance of a blurry shadow with a sharp voice that could split even the particles in the air. The singers who stood in the back fell onto the ground. People screamed and rushed to the exit. He saw blood gushing out from the one singer's neck, soaking their suits. In the midst of panic, he attempted to stop the bleeding were... In the midst of panic, their attempts to stop the bleeding were ineffective. Some of the singers went into convulsions, and they died in seconds. Bile welled up in his throat. He stepped backwards, knees weakening, and collapsed on the stage. People died right before his eyes, with the agonizing screams he had never imagined coming from human beings. How could it be so gut-wrenching? Run, run, run. He crawled like a cat, sneaking his way out, trying to escape from the room of death. He tried to stand, but to no avail, due to his father's... Then a hand grabbed his head. He felt a cold sensation on his neck. Blood maneuvered through his muscles. The murderer then released him, and he fell to the floor for the second time. The blood burned his throat, trickling down onto the wooden floorboards, trailing through the cracks and decorating them with red. He was gasping for air, but only more blood flowed out. So far, his struggle had only drained what was left of his strength. A person then turned him over and froze for a moment. It was the murderer. Shadows scrambled into his eyes. That murderer crouched towards him. Shadows obscured his vision. The murderer crouched towards him. He felt heavy, and for a second, his head felt tight. Then in the next second, his mind loosened gently. Later, he saw the police officers wandering, their heavy footsteps hurrying around the premises. A series of visions struck him. His voice, the tourniquet striking to his neck. The performance in the theater, the first time he sang, the first time he stood on the stage. These memories eased his way towards death. Trying to sing, he moved his lips. Tonality and rhythm were his laws. He believed that through his devotion to music, Beau would never abandon him. But no matter how hard he tried, the only noise that resonated in the air was that of a broken wooden door. Rage seeped into his flowing blood. The murderer's intrusions into his bright future was unforgivable. His voice, moreover, the only thing he cherished. I will slice your neck like this, he vowed. No, not enough. The murderer must lose every single thing that belongs to him. His feet, his eyes, his tongue, his organs. I will decorate the whole stage with his blood. And that wouldn't be the end. He would not end with this. He stretched a hand out onto the air, blood and foam trickling onto the floor. He longed to sing his favorite aria, but how could a violin perform without its strings? He should succumb to darkness. Hatred, grief, and fear flowed down his backbone, gradually ebbing away. Nothing would accompany him but silence in his death, on which his inward screams would have no effect until they ceased to exist. All songs must be hunted, for that is the omen of doom day. Oh, we get an intro. Uh, okay.
Okay. Episode fifteen forty four, December fifth, Thursday. Saint Godhark Trifle? Oh. Upon the altar one could spot a burning candle. The melted wax trailed down the candle to the silver plated candlestick. Ooh, oh okay, so Professor, alright. This is the text box for displaying the story content. Click the red keyword and the text will display the relevant information. It's the only can lit candle in the entire West Eyre Chapel and there's no sign of any visitors. West Eyre. West Eyre is the world's most populous religion. Its birthplace, Thalazak of Promland, is revered as the holy city. Its adherents believe in the teachings of Endianomi and its envoy, oh gosh, Yetheselempal. And they are notorious for their malicious reign in history. <laughs> the faith is unpopular outside of the... Okay, yeah, outside of the religion. More? Oh, okay, this I like. Character glossary. Okay, so this is who I am right now. Hyacino Mumathan. Priest of Westeri? Okay, so... This is very visual novelty, giving you character information and network. What the hell is network? Oh, okay. Okay. I see. I see. So, okay. All right. I don't have to just play these people. I have to connect them. Okay. Yep. Glossary. Okay. Alphabet. Unlock. Okay. I only have the one, so that's why it's only showing me the one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's read about our character real quick. Priest of the West Yuri. He's now managing the Chapel of St. Godharaka... St. Godharkar Seminary. He brings gospel to the local believers. He's very popular in the college for his baby face. Disappointed by the inaction of the Order during the Civil War in Promland. Okay, so recent Civil War. He has stopped reporting to them three years ago. He's busy with tending the small chapel and directing the choir of the seminary right now. Kind and righteous as he is, he can be naive sometimes, which probably resulted... From from his only experience with students and believers. Okay, which probably resulted from his only experience being with students. Okay, yeah. Like I said, this was not originally in English and is the developers work on important enough. Ooh, location. So Promland. Where's Promland? Okay. Oh, Promland right here. Yeah, this is very uh very much um Yeah, Eurasia Africa continent kind of like. I like that. Okay. Oh, I don't even know where Hakuriyo is. The monarchy in the northern land, Northland has been a per perennial political term. Okay, so this is... Alright. Oh, that's what I care about. The Federal Republic of Problemland. There you go. Location. Bersia? Bersia? Okay. I'm liking this. This is very... This is, yeah, this is what I like. Oh, I know where that map was made. Yeah, very much, yeah. Very indie dev, very very much using uh, free assets that are available for everything good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay, so seminary's right there. All right. On the edge of town, kind of. All right, let's enough of that. Let's get to the actual game and s me stop nerding out over all this stuff. Uh... Back, back. Okay. Left click or press C on characters' names to access their profiles. Right click or press N to switch to uh, the relationships network of all characters. It was last night the tomb's gate opened to the faithful while the dead groaned, bringing filth, blood, and pestilence upon the world. Okay, so undead also. Awesome. After heaving a deep sigh, he so. Hesino extinguishes the lingering flame and stores the melted candle. And so Theophilsa received a decree. His revelation was given by Votru. Thus the Lord sent forth the apostles to heal the sins of men. Votru? Ah, Votru, the omnipotent one. Well known for his, its eyes is one person of... Well known for its eyes is one person of... Andy Nomi. Andy Nomi. 
the Binti god manifested as Votru and the other one, each itself entirely being god. <laughs> okay, taken very much from Christianity's, you know, three, but the, the you know, there, there's three beings, but they're all the same. Votru is always observing the world, but cannot directly interfere with it, and thus they created Yetches. This is why people often turn to Yetches over virtue when praying for blessings. Okay. Oh, nope, sorry. The confessor gazes down the empty pew, rows of pews. Tomorrow, they will be filled with confessing residents. The function key in the bottom right corner displays the present karma points. Click the function, function key to access relevant menus or shortcut functions. You can set your navigation in the preference menu. This is very, very good for new, uh, new players to this genre. Right click or press escape also enables you to access the menu page. For more short shortcuts, please check out the help page. All right, awesome. The confessor. Who's the confessor? Confessors are ministers who lead both services and chapels, assisted by altar services in study. Normally, each chapel is assigned one confessor and four altar service servers. In Saint Godharaka. Got her car. Sorry. As a seminary, altar servers servers are usually selected from senior prefects of the college. Oh, I keep doing that. Theophilsa wanted to test him, so he called out, Weldrin, you must burn offerings. Priscilla, Father Mulnathan. Mulnathan. His musings are interrupted by a young girl's voice. Hesino opens his eyes, catching a glimpse of purple dress emerging from behind the pews. Are you still in prayer? Oh, I'm very sorry. I thought you might be done. Hesino smiles, standing up and beckoning her towards the altar. It's quite all right, Priscilla. My prayer is finished. May I ask what you're doing here? My child, I thought you would be enjoying the holidays by now. Ah, yes. Preparing for the baptism festival must be exhausting. Is there anything I can do for you, father? My thanks, child. I am grateful for your help. You may sweep over there while I prepare the altar. Okay. Nine. Yes, sir. Priscilla does as she is told, a bright smile illuminating her face. Hesino watches her trot away to fetch a broom and is irresistibly moved by her cheerful demeanor and openness. Takes a brass spatula to clean the wax off from the candlestick and pops a new candle in. The clanging of the metal blended with the swish of Priscilla's clinging cleaning. Silence filled the chapel the moment Priscilla arrived. Silence fled the chapel the moment Priscilla arrived. While cleaning the floor, she hums a glorious hymn. As the new rising star of the choir, Priscilla was highly anticipated by the Saint Gutter car. <laughs> I assume she's, she said they said the, they were, she was humming. She finishes her the song, Priscilla sweeps up the dust and empties it into the dustpan. Father Mulnathan, I have something to confess, and that would be... I actually came to ask permission for us to sing during the festival. Sister Fiona and everyone else in the choir agreed that it's such a waste that we're not singing. Priscilla rushes over to Hesino, broom in hand. She stares at him with her biggest puppy dog eyes, only for Hesino to bow his head and sigh. <sighs> Priscilla, we've been over this. Our choir will not perform... We'll... Our choir will not be performing, and that's final. <laughs> Father, it'll be the first baptism day since the war ended. Okay, so the Civil War is over. It doesn't make any sense for our chapel not to join in the celebrations. Priscilla and the others had a point. In fact, everyone who heard that Hesino didn't respond to the invitation thought he was being unreasonable. The only one who truly believed his decision was no mistake was Hesino himself. Priscilla. My dear, don't fight this. I don't like arguing with you. You'll take serious. Besides, you would have to compete with performers from all over the country. Even if our choir were selected, you would all have to perform for each of the three days' celebrations. Warrior Star. As I mentioned, since Warrior it's the first Lion. baptism day in four years, not even a single mistake would be tolerated. And you're, you sure, are you sure that you're prepared, young one? Z. Of course we are. Fiona already asked us to practice our performance, and we've already learned all the songs, all the songs off by heart. Okay, yeah. Fiona already asked us to practice our performance, and we've already learnt all the songs by heart. It's star. And I heard the final show list didn't come out yet, right? Please let us join. Pretty please. Priscilla frowns, squinting at her shoes, twisting her fingers sullenly. 
All it took was one last pleading look to, at last, shake his resolve. Alright, for the sake of Fiona, the church will screen the performance in three days. If you're chosen, then we'll see. <laughs> really? But if you're not chosen, you'll have to sit and watch the performance as part of the audience. Do you understand? Yes, Father will definitely win if I if you let us participate. Hesion's words bring the light of hope back into the little girl's eyes as she holds out her pinky and index finger, looking up at him. Professor grins, interlocks pinkies with her, making a childhood-style promise. <laughs> Deal, now back to work with you. No takebacks, just like Sandra's Bew says. Utterly confused, Hesion almost drops the saint steel he'd been wiping. Sorry. Okay, alright. Wipe uh, him down. Wait a minute. Wasp? Who's Bew? Your son. Sister Sandra's the handsome man that always comes to visit her. I'm really looking forward to their wedding. Oh, can we perform there as well, please? <coughs> comes here to the seminary? Getting married? Votur bless her. Uh, how was that even possible? His little sister was still studying at the women's college. How could she date in such a sacred place? No, no, no. The point was that he didn't even know she had a boyfriend. The revelation shatters Sino's composure like a bullet through a sheet of glass. He closed his eyes, sadly. Oh, sorry. Mic bump there. Sadly, realizing in a way he had never, he never had before, that Sandra had grown into a woman with her own ideas and secrets. Where are they now, Priscilla? I just saw them in the library. Nodding, the confessor sets down his stell and rushes out. All right, going to the library. Oh, we have time passage. Sino goes straight down the hallway towards the chapel's library. The brass of the door was so immaculately polished that a distorted reflection of his face looked back at him. The confessor of St. Gudharka squeezes two pieces of paper in his hand. The tickets for baptism day. Ah, we're a divinity school constructed from a yet-to-be-completed cathedral located in the suburban area of Thal Thalazak. Uh, it has been around for approximately... Hold on. It's been around for 500 years, but it has yet to be completed. I guess it was constructed... I, okay, the Divinity School was constructed from a yet-to-be-completed cathedral. So, it's we're, we finished construction now. The school has its own libraries and museums, and its chapel is open to the public. For many, its ever-silent bell tower is the most seductive secret. Okay. Tickets for Baptism Day. He has perfect excuse to step inside, but his feet seem to stick to the floor, keeping him from moving. Huh? Hmm? Sandra's quiet tr uh, chuckle and s the softened voice of a younger stranger trickled through the crack in the door. <laughs> I can't wait. You can't tell him. No Forget about the festival. We can meet. As their voices become softer still. Hasino presses himself against the door. He could have sworn he heard suspicious rustling. And for the sake of Botru, if the boy even dared to... Who's there? The door suddenly pulled open from inside, <laughs> causing Hasino to lose his footing, his legs snapped together, causing the solemn confessor to stumble once, then twice before bumping his head against the door. One card. <laughs> okay, so we get karma points for getting hurt. One karma point you receive from Hasino's injuries is now displayed on the function key. Changing the tendency of stories consumes... Car okay, so if we want to change it, it cost karma points. But I get one from getting injured, I guess. Gained only by protagonist... <laughs> Injury or death. Okay. When a protagonist is heavily scarred, he or she may not survive under certain circumstances. Be cautious and acquire. So I have to get hurt or die to get karma points. The level of injuries on the present character will be displayed on his or her avatar. You will require one karma point when a protagonist is injured. For every bad ending, you will receive four karma points. Okay. Alright. I don't know. Karma points, whatever. Huh? Brother, why are you here? Sandra peers over the boy's shoulder, the two of them, as close as a pair of sparrows in a snowdrift. So... I thought it was. We thought you were some suspicious man. The young man steps forward and gives a friendly smile. Uh... But thankfully not. You must be the Reverend Father M Muthaniel. I'm so sorry. I didn't know you would be stopping by. Senor doesn't like the young man at all. He doesn't appreciate the poorly disguised sarcasm nor the aura the man gives off. An aura which certainly doesn't belong in a seminary. Okay. Boy, a line. 
Father Hesion is fine. Thank you. I've come to deliver your ticket for the baptism festival, Sandra. I hope you and... Asino leaves his invitation dangling in the air, hoping Sandra's uninvited guest would state his name. However, the boy appears nervous, pulling the tip of his hat over his eyes. An awkward silence filled the room. Sandra's eyes shift between her brother and her boyfriend before she finally nudges the boy. Sure. Sorry, I'll be leaving now. I just came to get some old newspapers and that's all. I'll, um... Uh... See you later, Sandra. It was nice to meet you, Father Hasino. It's a lie. Good day. After the footsteps fade away, Hasino turns to his sister. Sandra stands near his shelf, head bowed, and clutches a newspaper in her hand. Sir Clo. <laughs> who is that hooligan you were flirting with just now? He's not a hooligan. He has a name, you know. It's Let's Let Zerilli. Let Zerilli, I believe. Zhang Doesn't matter what his name was. The boy's not the type of man you can rely on. I forbid you from seeing him again, especially in this chapel. Ooh. Okay. Sino crosses the room to the large oak table by the window before sorting through the books and new old newspapers left behind, wondering why the boy had needed them. <laughs> I'm already 16, Asino. I'll be an adult next year, so I can see whomever I want to, and you can't stop me. Sino stops to flick through some pages and turns back to Sandra. Seeming to run out of courage, she looks down at the ground, her eyes rimmed with pink as she fought off tears. <sighs> A line. Fine, I'll overlook this for now, but no when Father... Turna, when Father Turna returns, <gasps> what? Sunny. Didn't you know Father Turna? He. She looks at her bewildered. Last time he saw Father Turna was two weeks prior, right before the energetic priest had once again been sent to Skia to conduct the local services. <laughs> what about Father Turna? Sandra shakes her head. Sure. Father Turna can't. I'm afraid he can't come back. He. <sighs> they said he. Oh gosh, they said he killed someone first thought is that his sister's just mad at him about her boyfriend, but then he notices Sandra's pale face. She's scared. Uh, Don't tell Moss, me you believe that gossip. Moss. He's not a murderer, Sandra. See, you can't know that for certain, brother. I even read about the case in the news. It was so brutal. Sino shakes his head in disbelief. He knows Turna is devout, devout, although occasionally unreliable, and had always been an honest and virtuous preacher. Priest. Sino couldn't even consider, let alone believe, that he of all people would. Did you hear anything from the church? Okay, glasses flare. Nice. Sino shakes his head, feeling his blood run cold. The police had been wrongfully accused. The priest had been wrongfully accused, but the Holy Church wouldn't even issue a statement because they are too busy preparing for the festival to be bothered. Shandra raises her head to look at him, eyes darkened with fear and concern. Sino, it's fine. It's fine. And Turna, it, it's fine. Could you go back to by yourself? I just need a few moments alone. Sandra stares at her brother before shuffling out of the room. Sino places a hand on the holy cannon, trying to calm himself, but the fear still haunts him. I assume this is like their Bible or holy book. Holy cannon is okay. Collection of tales, stories. Yep. Still haunts him. In Veldrin, near the east. Thus, Veldrin built the altar there and arranged the wood on it and then place the goat on top as a sacrifice but the calamities and distresses still don't pass turn has already been crucified by the public if the real killer isn't caught and the church doesn't stand up for him he may very well be sentenced to death when Meldrin held his belief he said in time the truth prevails deliver me O vo true grant me wisdom and the eyes to see through truth Sino stands alone in the empty library. The sound of praying hovers among the tall shelves and countless ancient books. Vodru. Have mercy upon us, O Votru. Okay. This is the timeline. The upper and lower axes each represent timelines happen. Each represent timelines happening in different cities or different places. You can choose different chapters to play in this page. Okay. The squares on the timeline represent the events of a certain date. Each outline color of these squares represents a respective character. Once you click on the getting a big yawn. Once you click the squares up on the timeline, the summary of this chapter will be displayed on the upper right corner of the square. Click the character's avatar to begin the story. Okay, so this seems a lot more visual novel than strategy so far. Um, I guess the strategy is using your karma points and stuff. So that's at night. Let's, I guess, do this. So 
Some shocking news from the young girls. Okay. What's this? Ah, okay. So that's a different character. Is this what I just did? Okay, I guess that's what I just did. Okay. A few years ago, the momentary sensation... Sh Chevrolet Fuisher was expelled from the Club Stella by its snobby owner. Now, with new help from her new patron, Sh Chevrolet was able to return to the stage with new melodies and incredible voice. But she wants to more, more than this. Oh, I got you. Got to click the character portrait. So this is Stella Club in Isle City. Give us a show. Yeah, something high. Okay. It's in the riding night at the, at the carnival on the coast. A sea of bodies roams the streets in search of fresh delights. Before the stroke of midnight, people seek comfort from the grain of the grain and wine stalls. They sing and dance at the ben beach car uh, carnival. Wriggling and bumping, looking for someone to enjoy the night with. So karma carryovers, it seems. Let's see. She's a beautiful and attractive woman who is known by her stage name. Hell, Hell. She sings for a living and seems to have been a big hit many years ago. Chevrolet's infectious voice can easily evoke people's feelings. However, as she grew old and failed to catch... And failed to catch the trend. Today's Chevrolet uh, has fallen into dis dis disrepair <laughs> and has no place to perform. Only her faithful admirer, Sailor Maverick Bama Boma, gave her courage to keep going. Okay. However, one voice rises above the rest, high and distinct. He sings with holy reverence, but in the broken fashion of a drunk. Young man, Theophilsa and God VR, true apostles of thine, history will be recorded. Wait a minute. No. All rise and fall will be recorded as they watch over us. Forever true, true, no, that's not how it goes. He then realizes the young man has stumbled into a woman who, like him, looks out of place. She smells of berries and orange blossoms. Oh, what are you? Hmm, little boy, isn't it past your bedtime? Huh? Little boy? I, I'm not a boy. What's it to you? When he sees her face, the anger suddenly vanishes without a sound, like a cigarette blown out by a damp sea breeze. He has never seen such a charming lady, and her temptation was somewhere between taunting and arrogant. The woman chuckles and curls a finger underneath his chin, directing his gaze to meet hers. Zendomia. I'm not playing games with you. I'm not either. Drunkard brushes her fingers away, and she chuckles. His eyes blur, and there seems to be a cool, slippery oil rolling around in his stomach. No, oh, sure, Vlad. Uh, can I let you in on a little secret? Neo. F okay, so Neo. Her beauty has an aggressive air, which makes men want to avoid her edge, but also reluctant to shift their eyes. Huh? What? Not yet. Rule number one: a decent look. A decent look is part of being a gentleman. Your fly is wide open, dear. Now, scurry home. Neo gawks as Chevrolet snickers, tugging on his undone pants, pushes her away, and stumbles into the night. Satisfied, Chevrolet turns her eyes to the dark sky, sprinkled with twinkling stars. She gazes at the cold light, at their cold light for a long time, and the smile on her lips fades away. She looks at her wristwatch. The star-like diamond in the dial reflects a brilliant light. The time has come. Chevrolet retreats into the club and makes a beeline backstage. The crowd of sailors and rogues swells. They grow restless, waiting for their favorite performer to take center stage. Give us a show. Hurry up. Patience, young gentlemen. Tonight you will be dazzled. Oh, pieces of garbage and empty. Bottles fly onto the stage. Taco. Enough talk. Where's our show?
Listening to the distant shouts, Chevrolet changes into her dress backstage. When the hidden zipper on her waist is undone, her elegant perfume is obscured by the smell of cheap floral alcohol water emanating from the costume. She walks in front of the mirror and looks at her face. The wooden reflected back flashes a smile that shines like stars. It's the first time she's come back since it all happened. Everything around her feels familiar, but she doesn't miss her old life at all. The flames inside her still burn, from her despicable childhood through her glory days to this very moment. The span of time hasn't diluted the light, but made it blaze ever more. This is the place where she lived and struggled to reach. Everything is built on her heart. No matter how low she stooped in the eyes of the world, Chervelet is unashamed. Let them bash her again. This time she will not run. This will be her stage where she alone shall exist. She will be the best there ever was. Sudden creak on the floorboard sends a chill. Chevlet's spine. Up Chevlet's spine. She whips her head around, but when she sees the figure emerge from the darkness, she sighs a relief and puts the scissors back on the. T okay. Oh, Marianne. Ready to stab. Maverick, don't scare me like that, darling. He appears behind her, silent as a shadow. His eyes were dark as volcanic glass, pensive and unsure. How she adores them. Maverick was once one of her fans, although he was hardly noticeable when Chevlet was the lady of the hour. But after all these years, she's found this better than many others who ogled her while making vulgar jokes. Doesn't say a word. Sometimes silence is all they need to communicate. Chevrolet feels like it, feels his hand lift her hair and put something cold and heavy around her neck. That's a good trope. Uh, silent, si silent, uh, uh, individual and a uh, singer. Song. You don't have to. Movie star. It's not the problem. It's as beautiful as I imagined. Of course he's called Maverick, yeah. Her smile is tight and incredibly sad. She lowers her eyes and sees as she sees that a crippling smile in the reflection of the rhinestones. The prideful singer disappears and a sorrowful lady remains. Even the halo on the black of the black pearls seems to be pale and sad. She can't afford to lose Maverick, and she is eager to fulfill their common desire. When they no longer wander, they'll become a harbor for each other. They will create a family here in Skia, becoming the happiest couple in the world, which would also mean putting it into their dream. Get some H2O gamers. Of course, Chevrolet could never bring herself to end this yearning for the spotlight now with the spider's milk. Silk in hand, she refuses to let go. Maverick. Maverick, I. Is everything alright? You don't look so well. I'm just tired as all, darling. Mm. You sure don't stress yourself out? She paused them all over the moment. Okay, she better okay. Love for her. Yet her soul knows how much the stage means to her. So the more Maverick cares, the more it pains her to move forward. Marianne. Tired, I'm just tired, darling. Think it's time uh, I move on from here. On to bigger and better things. Maverick is quiet for some time, running his wind-worn fingertips across Shrivet's cheek. The silence continues to fill narrow, the narrow gap between them, one's eyes chasing the others, reluctant to move away. Write to me when you find a new home. I'll follow you just as I follow the stars. Chevrolet smiles softly. Maverick always uses his love to peel off her disguise, overflowing her heart with warm love. Maverick. Maverick. Go ahead, show your voice to them. Line. Of course. Okay. I think we get... It seems mostly... I mean, you have the whole, what is it, um, you have the whole, uh, karma thing, which I guess, oh, okay, oh, yeah, this is gonna populate out, because we got, yeah, oh, who, who, who the hell's this? Oh, Turna, okay, so Turna's in someone else's story, okay, yeah, this is gonna be very, <laughs> this is gonna be very, winding and yeah yeah okay all right this is very much gonna be a yeah i thought it was just gonna be what one two three four five six uh, yeah seven characters but you got all these side characters so this is a full-on freaking visual novel is what we got here and i guess the strategy part comes in with how you're gonna use your karma and i guess lead to different endings so that's awesome okay this is very large uh, and it, oh, okay, so you can you can go all the way back. And all right, cool. All right, I'm liking this. It's very stylized. They made the choices they wanted to and really focused on the art. 
that they wanted to, and then some other art, it's like, eh, you know, it's a stock photo with a filter on it. I understand that. But yeah, this if you're into visual novels, I mean, <laughs> this seems very well fleshed out. Um, once again, it is free on Steam, so if you're even if you don't, you know, haven't gotten into the visual novel genre ever and want to, I'd say this is probably a good one to jump into. Now, do be aware, um, uh, the, uh, what is it, system help. Yeah, I think it's only to chapter four or five that is English. So if you're an English speaker and not um, the original language that this game was in, which I believe is Mandarin, but again, I'm sorry if that's incorrect. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Um, I'm definitely probably going to read into it more and see how this karma system plays out in, you know, changing endings and stuff. But yeah, it's, it starts out very bloody, but like it seems like a slow burn to get there. So I'm going to leave it right here, gamers. Uh, feel free to um, do all the stuff, uh, both to support this game, um, Nell of St. Godharka, as well as uh, the channel and uh, Formal Bust. But yeah, until next time, gamers, I've been a Formal Bust. Take care and drink some H2O.